we are on five months and this is the 16th. So we are on five months and three days today. <clears throat> he um, called from our bedroom and he said, he said, help me, I can't breathe. <clears throat> so my daughter and I went and <clears throat> helped him got, get dressed. We went out in the living room and from the living room to our, from our bedroom to the living room is probably not 10 steps, but he had to stop and get his breath. Okay, just a minute. And uh, he sat down uh, on the chair so we could help him get his sh shoes on and he said, hug me because I don't know when I'll hug you again. Um, we've been married for 31 years. We have three kids. We have four beautiful grandkids. And Roger's dad passed away before um, we were married. And so one of the big things that he always said was <coughs> he wanted to be the grandpa that his dad was never able to be for our children because he was already gone. On day 13, they called and asked me if I wanted to sign a DNR. Wanted to know how long we were willing to let him li be on life support. And that's when I said that Collins aren't quitters. We're not. Um, and so thus became our mantra, Collins, aren't, Collins ain't quitters, um, which is very hard for an English major to have the Collins ain't quitters. In, but that's what we decided. <laughs> so, um, stop, baby. Just a minute. So they still have a trach in and um, just recently told us that that's probably going to be lifelong now. Um, two days ago, they told Please us that stop. he would probably have stop. just a minute the um, dialysis for the rest of his life. But there's not anything that I don't feel like that we can't um, overcome. So Roger's mom started a business um, when he was three, so 55 years ago. But um, on October 15th, we closed the doors to our business because we. <clears throat> Roger is the business. He's the salesperson. He runs our presses. He uh, is our plant manager. Our two daughters um, tried for the first for the three months of this that started this. The first three months of this, and it just it it couldn't sustain itself without him doing what he needed to do. Um, um, either one of us have worked since June. I got one of the big unemployment checks and one of the pandemic checks and then they put us on um, in everything is in review so we got since june we've got thirteen hundred dollars from the government and both of us have worked our entire lives and never used the government for anything I, i've never <clears throat> before july i never even thought about being on unemployment I mean, that wasn't something, I was raised different. I um, I worked three jobs sometimes just to make sure that everything, that we had everything and Roger worked his butt off. He was on the road a lot. And, and so that's why it was a little heartbreaking. Um, the girls took it really personally that the, that the um, doors of the business closed. They felt like they let their, they felt like they let their dad down. Why am I here? I mean, because that is the love of my life. And if he needs to see that we're not giving up on him so he won't give up, then I will come every single day. I, I I'm just, I, I can't give up on him and I won't let him give up. And so he needs me. So, and I need him. Billy has to drive an hour every day. And then she sits in her tent, hour after hour, day after day, month after month, she sits in front of that window so that he knows she's not giving up. During this time, Billy has taught herself to write backwards so she can leave love messages on his window. To keep busy as she sits there, she makes blankets and face masks to sell. But rain, shine, or bitter cold doesn't stop her. She's always there. Billy and Roger, 
separated by a piece of glass but never truly apart. In the history of love, names like Romeo and Juliet are written. Anthony and Cleopatra are there too. But even these cannot rival the love story that is Billy and Roger. <laughs>